meaning being a single man. I just wanted to say that I adore your movies and that most of the guys around here would probably agree with your opinions about women. I have a wide variety of interests, including motorcycling, repairing bikes, bodybuilding, PC gaming, music, electronics, and more. I've been dating women only to dump them when they bring up marriage. And in my 20s, I made amateur porn. It's time for us to stop doing these things so that more men can learn about McDowell. You can remain anonymous if you choose, but think of what we could accomplish if we all did it at once. You're not thinking big enough, even though your tower is excellent. The internet does far more to spread men going their own way than vandalism or culture jamming ever could. I myself participated in this phenomenon when I uploaded a video titled Walk Toronto 2014, in which I attended a feminist event, filled it, and put out the insanity for all to see. However, repeating such actions could lead to negative consequences, such as being fired. It does work. Mr. Anonymous, the second link in the description takes you to a video about Shanti Banks or the big red feminists, and she recently received media attention for talking about how she was harassed in public because she was attacking men three years ago. She admits in the video that she was mistreating men and then says it's unfair how people embarrass her in public. And then she says, yes, we should all be ashamed of ourselves. Mr. Anon also makes an intriguing point regarding pumping and dumping females. Women are becoming wise to these pump and dump schemes, reasoning that they have nothing to lose by having sex with a man on the first, second, or third date after he has paid for dinner. I would like to thank a guy named Larry for sharing a link to an article called Eat, Pay, Love. This discusses the rise of on-demand dating apps like Yuli, created by a German company, and describes the experience of one user, Tara, who received $600 from a man in exchange for going on a date with him and sleeping with him. The app was released in 2015 and promises instant payday, so it's no wonder that men are willing to pay so much for such a service. You know there are a lot of guys out there who probably haven't gone on a date in months or years, and they'll absolutely pay ladies to chat over dinner. And that's probably who this app is aiming for the most as males. It's fine that you're dating women and dumping them the moment they start discussing marriage. But assume you might actually have to pay for the privilege of dating in the first place. This is the risk of dating becoming a commodity, where men will have to pay women for the opportunity to have casual conversations. I'm also guessing you stopped making amateur porn, because it could get you into loads of trouble if the woman says that she never consented to you taking pictures or video footage of her in the nude and the police could use her story to confiscate your computer, phone, tablet, and pretty much any other electronic devices that you have. I agree with you that more guys should learn about male sovereignty by listening to Bam Tao. Meek, we need more exposure, and I hope that in the coming months, your channeling can help men get more aware with regards to female nature and eventually go their own way. But make no mistake about a Mr. Non-Famous, it is incredibly difficult for us to get mainstream exposure and appeal, as I know firsthand from my own experience. Before they find us and try something, we want to be huge and unstoppable like a juggernaut. So staying relatively under the radar and growing without being in the mainstream is the greatest thing we can do. Since I've come to believe that more and more women will embrace the concept of a sharing economy, I predict that things will only get worse as more and more women start expecting to be compensated for doing things as mundane as eating, talking on the phone, or even sending in their tax returns via text message. The more men become accustomed to paying for a woman's time simply to talk to her, the more likely it is that they will consider alternatives such as virtual AI girlfriends and interactive sex dolls, speeding up the development of sex robots. It was 30 years ago that one of the guys working at the nightclub was actually Lawrence Fishburne, the guy who ended up playing Morpheus in the Matrix films, and he even wore similar sunglasses to what he wore in the movies. This film, Cherry 2000, depicts men meeting women at a club and getting short dating contracts negotiated by third parties, and they agree to the terms and the man agrees to the price. If you want to see how bitter women would become in a world where sex robots made them less desirable, I embedded a clip from the film in the description. Just click on the link. It's funny to see women complain about giving a man more sexual attention. 
and it shows how women would act if they were no longer able to sugarcoat their behaviors. I'd like to bring up the case of Chanti Banks again, since the second link in the description is fascinating. In it, Banks is blurred out while talking about how men's rights activists have devastated her life. The best way to change the world is to go out and video feminists making idiots of themselves in public, because that's the kind of power cameras have these days, Mr. Anonymous. If anyone is interested in filming the walk for a couple of hours on August 6th and can provide any good quality video and pictures, I'll pay you $1.80. Just send me examples of your prior work MGTOW at gmail.com and I'll see if I can actually make it happen with regards to the walk. I thought it was actually cancelled, but they'll be doing it on August 6th in Toro. People have to be upset enough to go to Hillary Clinton's channel and spend time Dan voting her videos, so maybe she was trying to cover that up by buying likes. If you look at Donald Trump's YouTube page, you don't see any of these types of activities. But then again, he's not running for mayor of Midtown. Big props to the Midtown mayor for bringing this to our attention and for making a film chronicling this insanity. The dating scene, I predict, will soon resemble an auction, with women going out with men and charging them for their time in the same way that other services do. This will be great for men with money who can afford to pay for a woman's time and not have to deal with becoming an emotional tampon. But it will be terrible for men who are poor, unattractive, and have few pizzas.